Hi, this is John Schofield, and you're watching the Guitar Mania channel. John, welcome to Vienna. It's Thanks. a pleasure having you again here in Vienna. It's, it's a great honor to be able to talk to you. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Thanks. Thanks for thinking of me to interview. John, we've, we wanted to interview for a very long time, and it's, it's, it's a great honor, really. Um, we understand you arrived yesterday. We saw some of the photographs that you took snapshots. Oh, already? In yeah, that's right. Facebook, yeah. <laughs> John, uh, you're back in Europe with the A-Team. Uh, yeah, your trio, yeah. the A team. Uh, I mean, Steve and Bill have been your longtime musical partners, and it's yes. been the trio has been the cornerstone of your music, hasn't it? For for all yeah, these years. you know, I've been so lucky to get to play with these guys so much. Yeah, mm -hmm. many years. I mean, with Steve since the seventies, you know. Wow, you have played with these people for for such a long time, how, and, and 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 but also with so many others. How is playing in a trio different? from like playing with in a quartet or even yeah. more musicians? Well, there's a lot more work for the guitar player, you know, mm -hmm. and you have to try and uh, uh, play chords and single lines, basically, right. you know. And uh, I probably play a lot more single lines, you know, but I'm trying to get some chords in there to fill it up. You know, when you play with a keyboard player, you don't have to worry about that and you can just be uh, play your single lines and be like a horn player, you know. And uh, but that's all. Also, the great thing about trio is is the uh, that you don't have to worry about clashing with a piano player for the voicings, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of guitar in a guitar trio. <laughs> The, the last record that you recorded, if I understand correctly, was This Meets This Meets That, that. with Steve and Bill, yeah. Uh, will you be playing tunes from that record tonight? Some, yeah. I, I'm, you know, we have so many tunes. We actually have kind of a new repertoire that came about after that, uh, that we haven't recorded uh, these songs. Um, but yeah, we play some of the old, older ones. And then some standards, you know, that we've been playing that are, aren't on any record. And then I wrote... About uh, three years ago, I wrote a bunch of tunes, and we started to play some of those. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you have so many songs. Your oeuvre is so impressive. Uh, how do you Thanks. decide, I mean, really, what makes it on the set list for a tour? Or do you change it from day to Well, we night? change it. With this band, we could probably change it more than we do. But um, I think, you know, I like to, to play the same music when it's challenging, which jazz music always is and then to really be comfortable with it so that you can really improvise, you know, so that it can go different places. But then, after a certain point, you're just sick of that song, so you have to change to something else. And then the whole band gets a lift from playing something that's new or something you haven't played in, in uh, a, a few years, mm -hmm. and it's fun to go back to. Is it like, uh, do, you, do you talk with Steve and Bill? Yeah. Do you, do you look like, tonight we would like to play that tune? Or? Yeah. And sometimes we'll rehearse it just that afternoon, and we haven't played it for a while, and then we play it that night. Or do you have like people from the audience or your fans saying, "Look, John, we haven't heard well, the protocol yeah. in years." Yeah, well, we don't play. You know, we, it's hard to do that because I might not have the music for it. So for Steve, he might not remember it. You know, so or I might not remember it. So we might not have the music with it, the, the chart with us for everything, like protocol. Well, that would be hard to play trio, actually, you know? I, I think that would work better in a quartet with keyboards. <laughs> okay, that, that's an interesting point because I tried to play the, the trio and... It's very linear. I mean, you could do linear. it, you know, because there's just the bass part and the melody, melody but it's, yeah. It has, uh, when we played it, we, we wanted, we went into even the rock direction playing it. it, it a it, rock it, direction, yeah, yeah it, good, it, yeah. It, that's a very it, strong drive. It can go that way for sure. The thing is that, Crazy melody, you know. It's nice to have another instrument playing it with you, you know. So it's really effective when, uh, and uh, you know, when that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now oh, thanks for playing it, though. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I tried hard. 
Um, you've also just released a new record with Medetsky, Martin and Wood entitled Choose, uh, which has just hit the stores or iTunes or whatever yeah, you want to call whatever it. Whatever they are. <laughs> yeah. You, you want to talk a bit, little bit about that record? Sure. Uh, it's another group that I've played with for many years, Medeski, Martin, and Wood. I love playing with them, and we decided to make another album together, and we'll tour also later uh, next month and, and into December, both in Europe and in the United States. We, um, I love playing with those guys. They're so special. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this record, we thought we would do... Uh, we, we tried to have some sort of focus for the record rather than just getting together. And we, so we thought, well, we're going to do kind of Latin grooves, Latin music, but, you know, which is Afro-Cuban or, or Brazilian or uh, uh, even reggae kind of thing. All music that really comes from Africa, you know? Uh, rhythms that come from Africa. Not specifically African music, but yeah. rhythms that come from there. And then we took that as a very loose uh, theme and uh, made a record. And we, we, each guy wrote a song or two, and then uh, we also would bring in covers. And we, we thought, well, we'll do some classic rock covers, you know. So we did uh, some really, uh, really hackneyed, overdone rock tunes that everybody knows we did them. Sunshine <laughs> of Your Love. I Sunshine mean, of Your Love, yeah, everybody knows that. It's huh? so reminiscent of Bob Marley's Sun is Shining. I mean, it has a beautiful vibe to it. Oh, it's, thank it's you. It's really nice. Thank you so much. It's a great record. And uh, I also heard that you use different sounds on the record as well. You, uh -huh. you, 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 can you tell me, can you tell us, talk a bit well, about the effects that you use? You know, a lot of those, a lot of the stuff was really straight guitar, actually. I used my wah-wah pedal. Um, I use distortion, but it's really the amp distortion more than anything. And then some of the stuff was mixed by this really radical mixer, Danny. And he, um, he added some stuff. So some of the kind of almost flangy sounds were not my sounds. He put those on there. And then, you know, I just, uh, you know, might be playing some stuff that somebody might think was an effect, but it's actually guitar, you know. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to record the album? No, pretty quick, you know. We, we uh, first we came up with this concept, then we said, okay, each guy bring some tunes. We had one all day rehearsal. And then we went in the studio, the same place we rehearsed in the studio, and then we went for three days and made the record. Wow. For instance, on, on this meets that you tuned down the low E string to C sharp, or you even used the drop D tuning. Is, yeah. is a different tuning something that you regularly experiment or use? Not at all. Only, only with the low string. Mm -hmm. If the other strings get detuned, I'm lost. I have to learn new chords. But I do, yeah. I've always liked to occasionally take the low string down. And for that one where it went to C sharp, that's real effective, uh, I thought. And I, we will play that song tonight, actually, at, uh, when, when you ask what we're going to play. Yeah, that's, that's from this Misad, yeah, with the low road, yeah. Excellent. We're looking forward to that one. Uh, I mean, your playing also has a very percussive element to it. We, for instance, we attended a fingerstyle acoustic festival uh, last weekend, and uh -huh. people were using the acoustic guitar, or the classical guitar, like a drum, yeah. for instance. Yeah, stuff. it can be done. It can be, but also your playing, it sometimes has a very percussive element to it. Is that something that you do consciously, or is it something that just comes natural? Well, both. Uh, it, it, it's part of the guitar. Guitar is a percussion, you know, when you hit an instrument. First of all, guitar, you know, when we start to play guitar with chords and we're dun, 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 playing a rhythm and the chords follow the rhythm, it's a very percussive instrument. You know, that's what the guitar does on its own, you know. Blah, da, 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 just the, you know. And, uh, I always loved jazz and, and jazz-related music. That's, you know, and it's so important, rhythm, the aspect of rhythm. And actually, I really had to learn on rhythm, learn rhythm. You know, I, I, was, uh, I needed a lot of help with that. I had to practice it a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's become, it's very important to me 
and I've worked on it a lot to try and get loose. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's actually a very interesting point that I wanted to get into with you is uh, uh, rhythm playing. And uh, we're mm -hmm. fans in few musicians and many young people uh, probably more focusing on the lead lines or lead playing, yeah. but neglect rhythm playing and the rhythm part well, of it. Music is one third rhythm. Absolutely, you know, mm. and I, I think we can't neglect the other areas. One time they asked Sonny Rollins what the most important aspect of jazz was, and he had to think, and he said, ah, rhythm. So I believe Sonny Rollins. Mm. I, I love him and, and respect him, and I, I think it is really important. But, you know, when we sit down by ourselves and we're trying to work out this hard music, the rhythm takes a back seat. We're trying to figure out where to put our fingers. And then you want to just learn how to play fluidly, you know. And so sometimes we forget about rhythm. Mm. That's why it's important to be in touch with music for music's sake, not just for the instrument. Mm. To think about a song and the feel of the song and uh, the feel of the music is everything. You know? John, I mean, how did you improve? You just said you had to invest a lot of time. You even had to get some help. How did you improve? Well, I got help on my own by analyzing music, by checking it out, by listening to uh, the rhythmic element in music and trying to, to uh, understand it mm -hmm. and, and copy rhythms from, from records and from musicians I would see and guys I would meet and all kinds of little techniques of learning, actual learning a rhythm, you know. And uh, in jazz, you know, when they first, uh, people explain it to me that, well, we have a basic melody, and then we can anticipate that melody by coming in from a beat before, you know, or uh, an eighth note before. And then that's what syncopation is, you know, learning what syncopation is, and then you, you think about it, and, and, you know, you keep the beat, and then you try to sing the rhythms over it, you know? And it's not about doing it real fast always, you know, to try and get a feel, you know, this beautiful, cool feel of jazz, you know, to me, a lot of it is not super fast, you know, it's something else, uh, yeah. Mm. Do you also teach, John? Yeah, I do some, not too much. I don't do private lessons, mm. but I teach um, seven days a semester. So it's 14 days a year I go to NYU and they have a jazz department there and I teach a little bit there uh, in a class, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We would love to see also a tutorial uh, course or whatever if, 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 if that would be something that you would be interested in. Uh, what, to make it online? Online. No, or... I don't do that because they want people to come to the school. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good point. John, I mean, you've played with... <sighs> The, the list of the musicians that you've played with during your career is mind-blowing. Uh, yeah, you've played, I've been lucky. Yeah. You've been so lucky. It, it, but my question would be, who influenced you most as a musician and who influenced you most uh, in terms of the development as a human being as a, in your personality? Yeah. Well, you know, that's a good, uh, I'm glad you asked me that today because I'm playing with the bass player Steve Swallow. And, you know, I, I, uh, I got to say, he, he's the one who influenced me the most, and I'm still playing with him. Uh, after all these years, we met uh, in 1973 when uh, I was a musician, young musician. Uh, he came to the Berkeley School to teach. He didn't last long. He doesn't like teaching at all. But he found out after a year that, ah, oh, I hate teaching. <laughs> and, uh, but I met him, and he liked me. And we started to play together. And so he was really my mentor. And you know, these early guys that I met, all the jazz musicians that were my elders, you know, they show you how to live, you know, and some of them show you how not to live. <laughs> and uh, so you learn by example from, from, but I love those guys, the, the older musicians, you know, that, and they were really nice to me. All the older guys I met uh, would show you the way, you know, and some of them, are famous guys like Miles Davis and stuff, but a lot of them are, some of them are people nobody's ever heard of, you know, and, uh, and some of them are famous, uh, yeah. And then you were passing the baton on, basically, because- Yeah, we pass it on. We all pass it on, and that's, the, uh, that's life, you know. With, uh, playing with Avi Bortnik and the yeah. River Jam Band. Well, you know, you, you end up playing with, with younger musicians when you get older, because there's nobody else to play with. The old guys don't want to play with you anymore. They're like, I want that. I want too much money, you know, or something. The young guys were like, oh, I want to play with you. 
you know, the old guys, my old friends, they're like, oh, good, I get out of here. <laughs> but um, when you get to, I'm 62, so a lot of these guys, like Avi Bortnick from Uber Jam Band and Bill Stewart from this band, when I met them, they were young guys. But now they're all middle-aged. <laughs> So now there are you new young guys, you know. But I want to meet them too. Yeah, but you know, you just play with anybody who can play. Doesn't matter how old they are. If they play well, and uh, they can contribute to a sound, you want to play with them. Mm. John, certainly you, you had your when you when you were young. Were there times where you had uh, uh, felt that you had unsurmountable challenges or in a conflict or oh, times times sure. of crisis? I mean, yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, it's life as we know is not easy for any of us, and uh, I had a lot of self doubt uh, that I had to work through. But for some reason, I didn't quit. Hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I just wanted to be a musician more than anything, and I, I just thought, well, maybe I'll just be a, a, on, the, on the sidelines in jazz, you know, and that would have, was going to be okay. That's how much I wanted it, you know. Yeah. So I didn't quit, and it turned out to be uh, good because if you slowly build up, you know, you, you get better. I wa you know, there are some guys who, who are are really great when they're 21 years old. I wasn't. I wasn't. I had to learn how to play, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, this also raises the question, I mean, does John Schofield still practice? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I practice a lot. I play good. I don't practice so much. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to practice. I actually enjoy it more than I used to probably, you know, because I'm used to doing it. Now it's my little reverie, you know. And my wife always <laughs> says to me, so you're not practicing, you're just playing. But that is practicing, you know. And I, because I sit around and I play tunes and I jam, you know, I blow on tunes. That's what I do. I play on Green Dolphin Street or Stella by Starlight or a blues. Or then another song, I'll write a new song and I have to learn how to play it, mm -hmm. you know. And so I need to work on it. And I'm always working on material that I'm going to play out, you know. Or uh, for somebody makes an album and I say, I'll play on it. They say, we want you to play this tune. I have to learn it. Mm. Do, you, do you still think in, uh, when you're improvising, do you still think in terms, okay, now I'm playing A Mixolydian and now I'm playing Dorian, or this is B melodic probably not. Probably not so much. Not like I used to, because you can in, internalize it. You know, we already have do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do internalized. Like, you know, we just kind of do, 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 do. I don't have to think C, D, E, F, G, F, D, you know, that's probably the wrong key, but, you know, I don't have to think that anymore. But, and it gets like that with more complicated uh, patterns mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. uh, where you've internalized it. You don't have to think. Mm -hmm. But I know enough about music theory, so there are some situations like, oh, I do have to think for a second. Not so much because it's under my fingers, but I still have to think, Oh, augmented, you know, maybe sharp nine, flat 13, um, the altered scale. But I, I don't ever think altered scale. I know it. It's there. But I, my mind does think. Is it sort of a muscle memory thing? Yeah. yeah. Combination of muscle memory and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it, it's amazing how with you, if you practice, how you can internalize all that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you're not a genius, you know. Uh, what seems like, oh, you must be a genius to play through that harmonic sequence. Once you learn it, and it becomes muscle memory, and this mind, whatever it is, of remembering how the things work, and having it come through your instrument, and working on your ear training, so that you actually hear. That might be the most important thing. You actually hear the phrases in your head, and then they come out at the same time. Mm. And... Uh, it just takes a lot of practice. Yeah. I mean, in connection with muscle memory, there are also people saying, oh, look, muscle memory is not such a good thing because it makes you always play the same things. And then I, I think you said, uh, I don't know in what interview, probably, that to get rid of your cliches and licks, turn them into a, a, a theme or a head or something. And that's yeah. how you and get then rid you, of yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you never want to play it again if you have to play it at the, as the head. You know, Then you can't play it in your soul. But no, I think you know we have to, all of us, myself included, 
have to make this uh, conscious effort. You know, when you know you're just playing, oh, that lick again, you have to stop playing like that. Now, I, I kind of have a rule. I'm not sure if it works, but I think it might work, where uh, think of music as a language, right? And just like I'm talking to you right now, I'm talking in ideas. I'm trying to express an idea. So one thought comes right after another. And the idea I'm trying to express right now is how that works with notes. But when I'm playing, like say through some chord changes for a song, I'll start, I'll play the line that comes into my head for the first thing. And then the chord changes. And, and my mind, because I've worked on it a lot, thinks of how the line that I just played will go into the next chord. Just one way. I'm not thinking, well, there are 12 possibilities. I'll take this one. I'm just thinking of the one at that moment. So I'm in the moment as the music is moving and I'm improvising along. You know, so it's, it's, it's a lot like language in that I'm just playing what I'm thinking of at that time. It might not be the greatest thing, uh, but I'm just, at least I know it's what I'm thinking of at that moment. And, the, and then you, you start to play the cliche that you don't want to play. And then you kind of have to reverse. You know, sometimes you can stop it before it comes out. Or sometimes it starts to come out, so you just have to change it while you're playing it in the middle to make it a little different. And, uh, you know, that, that takes years of practice to be fluid enough to be able to do that. Yeah. While playing on, during a concert, is it easy for you to get into this moment, into the flow of into no, the it's, energy? Yeah, it's a lot easier than it used to be. Now I just do it, and it happens. But I'm still distracted by the audience and, and by things going on. Um, but I'm more used to it. Uh, yeah, I'm very used to it. I don't get nervous. And you, at first, it was very hard for me. Because I'd be OK playing by myself in my room. But when I came to play and there was any kind of audience or people listening, I just got very nervous, you know? But mm. that got better the more I did it. Yeah. John, one last question uh, about your guitar. You have played yeah. your Ibanez guitar for 30 years now. Mm -hmm. I love this guitar. It's an AS200. And uh, actually, tonight in the club, I have two AS200s from 1982. And, uh, the one I always play, the Sunburst one, is at home, and I have this other one that's a black one that I'm going to play tonight that I have had on the road some, but it's always been my second one. But I'm liking it now. I put these voodoo pickups in it that are, you know, uh, humbucker, fake humbuckers, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and I really like it, and so I decided to bring that on, on this tour. But it's, it's the same guitar. As, as the other one, but it's black, it's not sunburst. Mm. Actually, an additional last question. Uh, why the guitar? Well, I started out with a guitar. I'm too lazy to learn another instrument. I actually, you know, I started with folk music, you know, and then I got into blues and rock and roll, and then I got into jazz, and, and uh, way into jazz, and oh, gosh, there's not as many jazz guitar players. Then the music that I, I was listening to was like Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Thelonious Monk. These guys were not guitar players, Charlie Parker. Um, and so for a while, I thought, I, maybe I'll be a bass player. And I bought an upright bass, a very bad upright bass. And I started to practice. You know, and I went, you know, for a, a couple of months, I thought I was going to be an upright bass player. And then you know, I even had some calluses. And I had gone to a couple of jam sessions, but I played badly, and it was Oh, it was physically so difficult, you know. And then I went back to my room and I picked up the guitar and I played, you know, a little jazz. I said, wow, yeah, no, I'm good at this. And then I've stayed with the guitar ever since. I'm too lazy to play another instrument, you know. <laughs> John, but I love guitar. I love guitar, you know. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, thank you. John. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, no, All the best pleasure. for the Thanks. autumn tour. All right, thank you so much. Looking forward to it. <laughs>